the previous vintage of Erdi was uh, Erdi 07. So we launched it uh, three years ago. And uh, 07 has his own personality with uh, a lot of energy, spiciness. And um, now it's all about Erd 08, which has another personality uh, due to the to the climate, to the to the blend. It's a different blend, different composition in terms of uh, villages. I'm going to explain you that. Uh, starting with the vintage, maybe uh, vintage uh, 08 was uh, quite um, a, a normal vintage in Champagne, like a classical vintage. You know, in the area of the climate change, we harvest um, um, uh, the earliest as before, uh, 25 days before, as uh, 30 years ago. But in 08, uh, it was um, the normal date, like it was in the 80s or the 90s. We started the harvest uh, the 17th of September. We had a quite, quite cold uh, August. And uh, the start of uh, September was uh, quite tricky with uh, rain and uh, not so good weather. It was not a good year for uh, holidays in France. In 08, we had no disease uh, problem. And it started to, uh, the weather was quite cold, especially during the night. And at the first day of the harvest, we had a very nice sunny weather. So for most of the people that started the 17, we started uh, three days after because we consider that we need a little bit more maturity uh, since the acidity was quite high um, and it's still high on the 08. The main characteristic is that when you have a cold climate, you have a lot of um, tartaric acid, malic oh. acid. Uh, that means, uh, for example, the malic acid we had... Uh, 6.5 gram per liter. That's uh, huge in comparison to some year. Uh, we, we can have a, a three, four gram per liter. What was the last time? What was the last vintage that was like that? 2002, where you had a lot of malic acidity. What was? Um, um, it was a, a 69, very acidic. Oh, okay. 88 also. Uh, 88, okay. Yeah, probably 88 uh, is quite uh, comparable because 88, we had uh, an average maturity uh, below 10 degree of accurate potential. And this vintage yeah. weight is also uh, has also an average maturity of 9.8. But wow. you know, the, the alcohol potential doesn't yeah. mean uh, not mature in Champagne because sometimes we have uh, 10.5 and it's not mature. Like yeah. uh, uh, like uh, fifteen, we had a lot of uh, vegetal notes, even if the grapes were at uh, ten point five. So uh, it's more a question of uh, climate and a question of uh, of terroir and, and and tasting the berries uh, also important. Uh, few days before we start, so O eight is a is a very classic to sum up. O eight is a very classical vintage in Champagne. Classical in terms of, um, it's like uh, we had uh, in the 80s and 90s uh, vintage. Yeah. Not part of the vintage we have now, uh, part of the climate change. What's interesting to me is, uh, so I see you have this, uh, you have the new bottle, which is which is interesting. And um, it's interesting thinking that you guys sort of planned this a long time ago, obviously. You know, and no, exactly. no one really knew about it. And it has a much thinner uh, neck. So, exactly. yeah. It's, um, I have the non labeled bottle, you know, the shoesmaker are always uh, with the bad shoes. <laughs> I have the, the neck bottle. Um, but uh, yes, regarding the, the shape, we started in uh, 08 with a uh, special QV. So special QV uh, bottled in 08 was released in uh, in 12. So we okay. have already this shape with special QV since 10 years now. 08 before 07 was in the traditional form. The neck is thinner. It's a 26 millimeter uh, diameter. The ring, I mean, 26 millimeter uh, against uh, 29 for the traditional uh, bottle. So 
the, the advantage of this one is the is that we the oxygen ingress the gas exchange that's why some people say that it's like a, a magnum effect but yeah it's not totally true because now we have uh, new tools to measure the gas exchange and um the, the measure i did at bollinger shows that uh, we we uh, decreased by uh, around I have to confirm that in the, in the coming month, but around twenty percent less oxygen ingress uh, per year. So uh, it's not exactly the magnum effect because you know the magnum effect is uh, yeah. is half because uh, we have a double volume for for the same oxygen ingress. Here it's minus twenty. So that's good, and so that suggests really in your minds at um, Boulanger is that uh, R D is made to uh, to age you you really want to emphasize its ageability exact exactly and, and this year you you underline something important for the 07 we did a master class we talked a lot um, about the importance of disgorgement the disgorgement date because we put back the disgorgement date on the main label uh -huh. uh, so we insisted a lot on um, the importance of disgorgement oh, yeah. And uh, the way we do it at Boulanger now with the jetting method, probably you have heard about this method uh, to inert the headspace and to preserve the champagne after disgorgement to reduce the oxygen ingress and to reduce the, the oxidation after, after disgorgement. Mm -hmm. And uh, for this release of 08, we are going to, um, to insist a lot on the time uh, and the aging, the maturation on lease and especially the role of the bottle and the role of the natural cork we put for the aging. Because you know, all the vintages, uh, including ARD, are aged at Boulanger with a natural cork maintained with a staple. Oh, so, okay. I, I forgot about that. Yeah. So you and have it's, the cap, you have the um, natural cork, like the old traditional way of doing it. Yeah. And it's something um, important to consider when talking about ARD because it's a long aging, 40 years, and uh, we are going to do a very interesting exercise. It's, it's a blind exercise I will propose uh, next week. Is to compare mm -hmm. the same wine aged under a metallic cap or a cork. Ah, interesting. To show the people how different can be the same wine from the same vintage depending the closure system. With the with the cork, that's the cork that just has the little metal, like um. I don't know what you could call it, but it, it's just the, going across the like that. Yes, yeah, the staple. The staple, yeah, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. And then the other one is the crown cap, just like that, exactly. just like on a bottle of beer. Yeah, exactly. And it's a huge commitment uh, in terms of work because uh, when you maintain uh, the traditional way, do you know how much butter we can disgorge manually per hour? No. It's between 200 and 300 bottles per hour. And with a, a line, uh, um, when you do it mechanically, you, uh -huh. uh, how much uh, is the? Um, you know how much we can disgorge per hour in champagne. The uh -huh. biggest line, big, the biggest line is uh, twenty thousand per hour. Oh my God! <laughs> yes. That's amazing. So, so this, wow, that's really just really handmade. It's handmade. Yeah, exactly. That's exciting. And and what is the um, I haven't done that tasting, but what do you find with the uh, with your uh, wine your um, wines that have been uh, aged on cork? Then, like, what's the difference? Ah, the difference. Yes, <clears throat> we see uh, clearly that um, through the tasting and confirmed by the measure, we have less oxygen ingress, so we have uh, an evolution ah. under reduction. So uh, one of the key aspects of uh, the Boulanger vinification is that after a, a, an oxidative vinification in barrels, because 100% of the wines are fermented in barrels for the vintages, including ARD, then we uh, evolve uh, in uh, the world of reduction, means uh, much more grilled, toasted uh, uh -huh. aromas. And for the weight, it makes uh, a lot of difference because we have this uh, very interesting um, grilled aromas. Um, this uh, vintage is made of 100% uh, Grand Premier Cru, means uh, Chocolat. Okay. 
So for me, the freshness uh, we constructed is a 3D uh, dimension, acidity, of course, uh, uh, bitterness, which is very difficult to manage. But when it's well done, it gives a, a lot of uh, complexity and length to the wine. It's part of the DNA of uh, RD to be uh, un la grande année, to be only grand and premier cru. And we continue to invest only in grand and premier cru. Uh, we have a vineyard of uh, 180 hectares and we continue to buy in those um, uh, areas. That's really impressive. Uh, it's one of, I can't think of an RD. Yeah, maybe something from the 80s, but uh, it's definitely a step up from anything in the, you know, the, any of the recent vintages. It has much more intensity and complexity. And um, the, um, also, I wanted to pay tribute to the work of uh, Gilles Descotes because um, he did a lot of work in the vineyard uh, to remove uh, the, all the, um, the herbicides uh, on, on, the, on the soil uh, and, and to uh, implement the sustainable viticulture. We were, we were the first house to, to be uh, certified uh, HEV, high environmental value. So wow. this work... Um, part of uh, when Gilles joined Bollinger in 04, he started to change this culture. And I think 08 is the way we, he wanted to, to design the wine, to create the wine from the vineyard with more and more purity and precision. Yeah. And we see uh, the result with La Grande Année 14 last year. We released 14 was uh, in the same line uh, as uh, 08. Very pure, um, very uh, precise, and also we uh, improved a lot the process of uh, winemaking, managing uh, more precisely the oxygen uh, through, uh, through the barrel unification, the aging, understanding better the role of the bottle, the role of the core, yeah. uh, the, the difference we can have between the different cellars. We have uh, six kilometers of uh, cellars underground. And, and uh, the wine edge uh, not the same way depending where we store the wine, um, and um, and then the disgorgement with uh, with the jetting to to master the post disgorgement uh, uh, aging. The wine is really spectacular and and extreme in a, in a way that uh, you know the champagne connoisseur would really appreciate. So. Uh, uh, really, thank you very much. Hope to see you soon also. Okay, je vous voir uh, uh, en champagne. Merci. À bientôt. Merci beaucoup, James. À bientôt. À bientôt. Bye bye. Ciao. Have a nice day. You too.